If you subscribe to the channel, you'll get lots of interesting videos like this one. And if you like the video, it'll really help us out. Please comment down below for any other interesting things that also really helps us out as well. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. We're going to continue with a new section of theory now. But before we actually do that, I want to actually bridge the gap in between. So what we've been talking about are several things related to regular languages, namely uh, DFAs and NFAs. And it doesn't really matter what those are, but those are a machine model. So these are basically a state-based machine where you feed an input in and you just observe what happens and then whatever state is at the end, you either accept the input or not. And what we also had was something called a regular expression, a regex. And what we had there was it was describing what the language is. So this is describing uh, the language in a formal way. We had this problem with DFAs and NFAs because when I try to tell you I want to make a DFA for something, I have to write the language in English, and that's kind of annoying because English is not formal. A regex is an efficient way of doing that and a formal. But And one thing that we saw was that we can actually convert between these, um, between these two different types of models. So we actually want to see, is there another way we can talk about a language? Well, if we actually look at these two, the machine and describing the language, well, there isn't really a mechanism for actually giving an example of a string that is in the language. I mean, I could look at the machine and I could conjure up a string, but that's not really formal. Uh, if I look at a regex, like for... Uh, just for funsies, like 0, union 1, 1, uh, star, 0, 1, union, uh, 0, 1, star. If I give you something like that, that that's actually ki kind of complicated to actually try to understand how to actually make this string. You can come up with a string from here, but the question we want to address here is, is there a way to generate strings uh, formally in a regular language? Okay, so if I have a regular language, I want to actually start making strings in the language so that um, instead of just describing it or just having a machine say yes or no on it, I want to actually see the strings themselves. So that concept is something called a grammar. So a grammar is a mechanism that allows us to actually generate the strings. How do we actually, so what is a grammar? So a grammar has basically four types of things. It has something called variables. It has something called terminals. It has a, a set of rules and a start variable. Okay, and what and what are these? What we desire to do is to generate a string entirely of terminals, only terminals, nothing else, and. So you, okay, so we have a start variable, which means that implies that we're going to start there. But if we want to make a string full of terminals, how do I get from variables, which we don't want to actually make, to actually making terminals? So that's where the rules come in. So in the rules, what we have is um, something on, uh, uh, let's just say an A right here. So this A here could be a mix of variables and terminals in the general case. We're going to talk about a specific case, but we're going to handle this in the general case first. And what else does the rule have? It has an arrow with a B on the other side where 
the b on the right side is also a variable. Uh, sorry, it could be a mix of variables and terminals. So all rules are going to be of this form. Something on the left of the arrow, something on the right of the arrow. And we always will have a finite number of each of these, just like with DFAs and NFAs and whatnot. A finite number of variables, terminals, rules, and we have a start variable. So what, how does this actually work? Uh, what does the rule actually uh, do for us? What it says is we're going to take, if we see an A, or whatever A represents, and we see it, we are allowed, if this rule exists, to convert it to a uh, to the right side of this rule. So in some sense, we are allowed to replace whatever A is with B. Okay, so if A is just a mix of variables and terminals, we can take that and replace it entirely with whatever is on the right side. And whatever is det um, determined by the rules in terms of what is defined on the rule set, that is what we're allowed to replace it with. So let's actually do a quick example of this. So let's just say that we have a variable s, which can make a uh, little a or an S B or capital A. A capital A makes a little B or a S A. Okay, so this is just a um, this is what a grammar is. So notice that we have stuff on the left side and we have stuff on the right side. And you may be wondering, why did I say or with these vertical bars? This is to indicate multiple rules. Okay, so I could write out each rule on its own separate line, but I do it this way because the left-hand side is always the same for these rules. And so it's, it's a lot more compact to do it this way. So let's actually uh, start computing things, so, so start uh, creating strings with this. Well, you, we have to know here what are the terminals and what are the variables. So the variables, in this case, are S and A, and the terminals are going to be the, the lowercase characters, which are a little a and little b in this case. Typically, what people do is they have variables be capitalized and uh, terminals to be lowercase. But... Um, you have to be able to specify this in a formal way. So I have to also specify to you what the start variable in this grammar is. So let's just say that s here is the start variable. And, and typically people will write s as being the start variable because it's called s, but it, it doesn't have to be. It could be any variable. Okay, so let's start with s right here. Then I can... Uh, what I can do is I can replace this S entirely with one of these right-hand sides. So let's say I choose this SB right here. So that means I'm going to take this S, uh, basically delete it, and I'm going to replace it with SB. Okay, Because that's the one that I chose. Again, I could have chosen any one of the three. I, I, there's, there's nothing that says I have to choose a particular rule. It's just... Uh, I have three to choose from, and that's, let's just say that's the one I picked. Okay, well then now what we do is we say, okay, well, there's no rule with SB on the left side, but I do see rules with S on the, on the left side, and S is a, a, a variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that variable with another rule application. Let's say that I will, will replace the S with an A just as an example. So this S right here is going to be replaced with the variable A. And then I could, if I wanted to, let's say I replace this A with uh, SA right here. So just like before, I'm going to replace this variable A with SA, the thing on the right-hand side. So notice that the the terminal B gets carried along for the ride here. And in fact, 
There's no terminal on the left side of the rules right here, so in fact, once the terminal is created, it will never be deleted, which is an interesting thing. Okay, so then let's say now we have two variables. I don't see a rule with both S and A in that order on the left side. So let's just replace one of the two variables. It turns out that it doesn't matter which one that you replace, um, at least in this case. Uh, if there was more things on the left side, it would matter which one you, um, well, what things you actually replaced here. But in this case, it doesn't matter because there's only single variables on the left side. Okay, so let's say I wanted to replace this A right here. Well, let's say I wanted to now try the other rule. A goes to little b. So just like before, this A gets replaced because I'm replacing that variable or, or that left-hand side. So we're going to have S, which is carried along for the ride. We replace the A with a little b, and we still have that other little b along for the ride. And then now let's say I wanted to re replace S with lowercase a. So just like before, this variable s gets replaced with lowercase a. And notice now we have a string entirely full of terminals. And so uh, this is the string. Uh, we can't actually do any more with this because it's entirely full of terminals. Okay. So what we can tell right now is that this grammar right here can produce uh, a, B, B. That is an example string that it could could generate. Of course, we could uh, we could iterate some of these rules over and over and over and get more and more strings. But this is an example of a string that can be generated. Okay, so that's an example of a grammar. We're going to be in the next time we're going to be talking about a very specific type of grammar that is useful for regular language design. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. As always, I'll see you next time.